Hi guys, welcome to my channel Learn in Minutes and the topic for today is Periodontal Flap Surgery. I will be covering up this topic under the following outline. What is a periodontal flap? The rationale behind raising a periodontal flap, the types of flap, indications, contraindications and finally the armamentarium required. So let's begin. What is a periodontal flap? By definition, it is the section of gingiva and or mucosa that is surgically separated from the underlying bone to provide visibility and access to the underlying bone and root surface. Going on to the rationale of raising a periodontal flap. A periodontal flap is raised to gain better visualization, direct access and for ease of instrumentation. Next is the types of periodontal flaps. They can be classified based on three categories. Firstly, based on bone exposure after flap reflection, it is of two types. Full thickness, wherein all of the soft tissue along with the periosteum is reflected, usually done by blunt dissection. Second is the partial thickness flap, wherein only the epithelium and a layer of connective tissue is reflected, done using sharp dissection. Next is based on the flap placement after surgery. The first type is the non-displaced flap. Here the flap is returned and sutured back to its original place. And the second type is the displaced flap where the flap is displaced either apically, laterally or coronally. A few examples include the coronally advanced flap usually done for root coverage, the apically positioned flap usually done for crown lengthening or increasing the width of the attached gingiva and the laterally displaced flap to cover defects lateral to the donor site. The third classification of flaps is based on the preservation or splitting up of the papilla. It is of two types, the conventional or the split papilla flap and the papilla preservation flap. Going on to the indications of periodontal flap surgery. Periodontal flap surgeries are primarily used for pocket therapy to accomplish the following, to increase accessibility to the root deposits, eliminate or reduce pocket depth, gain access for resective osseous surgical procedures to expose the area to perform regenerative procedures. So the various indications are in cases of persistent inflammation in moderate to deep pockets despite scaling and root planing, vertical defects to debride these defects and to evaluate the feasibility of using restorative materials such as grafts and membrane to correct craters, irregular bony contours, to treat intra-bony defects distal to the last molars, to treat grade 2 and 3 furcation involvements, and finally to perform root resection and hemisection. Next is contraindications. Periodontal flap surgeries are contraindicated in patients with uncontrolled medical conditions such as uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled hypertension, history of myocardial infarction less than 6 months, etc. in patients with poor plaque control, with high caries risk and in patients with unrealistic expectations or desires. Finally, discussing the armamentarium required. As of now, we have a vast range of instruments that are available in the market. I will enlist a basic uh, list which is must have. Firstly, we require BP blades and handles. The 15, 15C and 12D are the common blades. My favorite is the 15C. The BP handle number 3 is the one which is regularly used. There are various types of handles such as the flat handles, the round handles, straight shank, contra angle. You can use the ones as per your comfort. Next we require periodontal knives and the most commonly one used ones are the Kirkland and the Orbitz knife. A range of periosteal elevators are also available such as the Hirschfeld, Glickman, Pritchard etc. My all time favorite is the P20 which has a toe like end on one side facilitating smooth atraumatic flap elevation and a beveled contra angle tip on the other side that is easy to use on the palatal and the lingual side. Next we require curettes that form a very crucial part of flap surgeries and help in debridement. We have Gracie and area specific curettes specifically numbered for facial, mesial, distal, anterior, posterior areas. We also have the universal curettes such as the 4R, 4L for posteriors, 2R, 2L for anteriors. Modification of brassy curettes such as the extended 5 with a long shank, the mini 5 with a short blade etc are available to further enhance the instrumentation in deep and narrow sites. And finally we do require sutures 
needles, preferably the reverse cutting triangular half circular and the needle holder and a must to have is a gastroviso scissor used for trimming of flaps, tissue tags and sutures. That's all for now guys, thank you.